It's a poem about Three Mile Island, and uh, I live I live at the end of a a block where there's a siren, which was put in so that we we could be all be notified if there was ever a meltdown at Three Mile Island. This siren would, would get the word out. <laughs> However, the siren is also used as a fire siren, and it's also tested all the time. And you right. have to listen to the type of whale that it lets out to know <laughs> what it means. And sometimes it gives the big warning type of whale, even when they're just testing it. So, um, so anyway, it, you're, you're relieved when you realize it's just someone's house burning down. This is about that irony, and it's called Three Mile Island Siren. In Hummelstown, 10 minutes from the power plant, now known for near disaster, they've installed a warning siren. One horn on a tall pole that turns when turned on, like the blades of that TV news copter. Its shriek reminds me of the 50s, when I was too young to understand the air raid sirens I've since read about. That sound, so they told us at first, means a meltdown or something. At any rate, a warning that unpacked or no, we'd better run like hell. The first time it went off, some did just that, in terror, scurrying like squirrels. Then it was clarified belatedly that daily tests at noon were necessary. <laughs> and furthermore, the siren would cry fire, the way most sirens do these days. The way you can tell what the scream means is how the notes held. If it's not a high note, if it wavers and wails less than 15 minutes, then it merely means some neighbor's house is burning. Good news by comparison. <laughs> oh, perhaps you'll sense some gap between held breaths, a mystic's moment in midair, before the sound makes clear its meaning. But such things you learn to live with. The damage, actual and only damage, poisoned only unit two, a fever sealed within lead walls. So say the NRC PR men. And here and now, in Hummelstown, where everyone has always been a neighbor, there's no fallout, just a feeling when someone's charred, smoldering grief makes us sigh with relief. When I was a kid and I, I lived in Sunbury for quite a few years and I, I used to always like money. <laughs> <laughs> so I do things to get money. Uh, one of those things, remember the grit newspaper? Oh, yeah, yeah. sold it. Yeah, so you, never you sell money. it for a dime. Yeah. Never, never gave any money. You kept on the all profit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's mentioned in here. But cool. this is called All Street. It's A W L All Street. Cool. I work the poorer districts. The bastards up the hill with big lawns and big houses wouldn't take a thing. Down in the front street river mansions, the old widow women half times didn't bother to come to the door. I learned to work the neighborhoods where the view was the side brick wall of Phelps Auto Supply and bent backyard fences held nothing much of nothing. The poor respect the poor. Then again, enjoy imagining someone just a little worse off. Down all street, they took it all. Occasion cards from sympathy to birthday. September Christmas orders for an October delivery printed with a choice of greeting in the name the way you specify. I pitched the grit once but quit because the premiums weren't enough. I got my rewards, cassette deck when they first came out, a silver spider bike with a three-speed gear shift and a sissy bar. <laughs> but you had to do it right, act polite, almost shy, especially when collecting. And they'd act mock polite right back fake serious and business like the boy. On some Saturdays, I could hear the woman <coughs> when she turned to whisper, Henry, give me money to pay the colored kid. <laughs> Two Washingtons for a good sale, a Lincoln if the sister was over visiting and took an order too. God, I love those folks. <laughs> <laughs>